This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We begin today's show looking at the bombshell report in The New York Times that reveals Donald Trump paid no federal income taxes in 10 of the last 15 years. And he paid just $750 in federal income taxes in both 2016 and 2017. The Times published the report after obtaining more than two decades of Trump's tax return data. On Sunday, Trump called the report fake news, but he continues to refuse to release his tax returns. The reporting paints a picture of Trump as either inept entrepreneur or a criminal tax cheat. For years, he's reported massive losses in some of his key business projects, including more than $300 million in his golf courses and $55 million in his hotel in Washington, D.C. He's used the losses to offset his taxable income in other areas. The New York Times also reveals the president has been locked in a battle over taxes with the IRS over a $73 million tax refund he claimed after his casino business in Atlantic city collapsed. Trump could be forced to pay over $100 million if he loses that fight. In addition, The Times reports Trump has more than $300 million in loans he personally guaranteed that will soon come due. The Trump family also reduced its tax bill by paying nearly $750,000 in so-called consulting fees to Ivanka Trump while she was an employee of the Trump Organization. Former Department of Justice Inspector General Michael Bromwich responded to the report by writing on Twitter, quote, Trump knew something we didn't when he started balking at the peaceful transfer of power. If he loses the election, he faces federal and state prosecution for bank fraud, tax fraud, wire fraud and mail fraud, as does his entire family. No OLC memo will spare him, he said. The New York Times also reports how President Trump has earned millions of dollars in overseas licensing deals since entering the White House, including $3 million from the Philippines, over $2 million from India and $1 million from Turkey. In 2017, Trump paid just $750 in federal income taxes in the United States, but he and his businesses paid nearly $157,000 in taxes to the Philippines and $145,000 in taxes to India. We begin today's show with Ellie Mistal, the nation's justice correspondent, author of the magazine's new monthly column, Objection. He's reported on the legal fight over Trump's tax returns. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Ellie. Can you talk about the significance of this bombshell report in The New York Times? Yeah, it's a doozy. Um, look, I go back on this to Michael Cohen, Trump's former lawyer and fixer's testimony before Congress. Michael Cohen told us all what the what the game is. He said that Trump inflates his assets when it helps him, for instance, to get on the Forbes richest people in the world list, and he deflates his assets when it helps him, for instance, to hide his income on his tax returns. Michael Cohen testified to this in front of Congress. Now, the tax documents that the, were leaked to The New York Times and they reported on do not prove Michael Cohen's story. But if Michael Cohen was telling the truth, this is what the tax documents would look like. So you tweeted last night, the thing about the tax leak is that while tax avoidance is legal, tax evasion is not. Explain. So. I mean, look at, at at certain high levels, and this is a this is a thing that we fight about a lot politically. But at certain levels of the economy, there are all sorts of tricks wealthy people can do to avoid paying taxes. It's one of the reasons why uh, tax lawyers are so smart and well paid, right? Um, there 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 are tricks. There are things that you can do. Um, decreasing your taxable income with losses from one side of the ledger um, to offset huge gains on another side of the ledger is, you know, commonplace. Um, there, there are various tax avoidance schemes that are legal, that are perfectly legal. We can 
argue about whether or not they should be legal, um, but it is it is clear that they are legal, right? Um, to make it work, you kind of just have to be really bad at something. Um, Trump happens to be really bad at business, um, uh, according to these documents, and that is how he is able to fritter away um, something around, along the lines of $434 million um, he earned from The Apprentice and other licensing deals. That's that's tax avoidance 101 if what he's saying in the documents is absolutely true. So however, I'm, go ahead. However, I'm saying however there's also the, the possibility that the tax documents are fraudulent and if they're fraudulent um, there are there's a lot of there's a lot of suggestion here um, that what we could be looking at is not tax avoidance it could be the Michael Cohen allegation of tax evasion which is, in fact, a crime. So on Sunday night, uh, President Trump held a news conference right as The New York Times was dropping their bombshell report. It's fake news. It's totally fake news, made up fake. We went through the same stories. You could have asked me the same questions four years ago. I had to litigate this and talk about it. Uh, totally fake news. No, actually, I paid tax. But and you'll see that as soon as my tax returns, I, it, it's underwater. They've been underwater for a long time. So, Ellie Mistel, you tweeted last night. Um, there's something he could do to prove this. He could just release his tax returns, which he has promised to do multiple times throughout the course of his presidency. This audit excuse is now is now known to everybody, right? We know we know what the audit is about. It's the nine hundred. It's the ninety five million dollars um, he paid in taxes to the IRS that he gen then got a seventy two point nine million dollar refund on later. That's what the audit's about. Everybody knows that now. Great, we're done. So now he can just release his taxes, right? Like he can just he can just he just don't go. To his file cabinet, you know, open the drawer and send out his two his 2019 tax returns if he is so if he is calling this fake news. Like we can't just accept anymore this blanket fake news story. What exactly is fake, President Trump? Is it fake that you paid your daughter seven hundred fifty thousand dollars while she was an employee, um, potentially to lower your tax bill? Is it fake that you called your Westchester property um, in Bedford, New York, a business and wrote off $2.2 million in property taxes as business expenses? Is that fake, or did you actually do that? Because that, that those are the questions now. We don't have to just take his word for the fact that he paid lots of taxes. We can see in the documents that he didn't, and if those documents are wrong, Donald Trump can release his taxes and show us what he claims is the real truth. The New York Times Super says simple. this time around, he's personally responsible for loans and other debts totaling $421 million, with most of it coming due within four years. Should he win re-election, his lenders could be placed in the unprecedented position of weighing whether to foreclose on a sitting president. He owes $421 million, uh, Ellie Mistal. And we don't know to who. Like, that, that is the thing, like, of all the stories here, some of it is just kind of hilarious of, of incompetence on Trump's part. Some of it is perhaps criminal tax evasion. Um, the, the loan, uh, the outstanding loans, is a threat to American sovereignty. And I am not being hyperbolic when I say that. Um, one of one of the reasons why we we find large amounts of outstanding debt disqualifying for many positions in the federal government is that it's a hook into corruption, right? Like the people who who, who you owe money to um, might have leverage over you as you execute your duties. The fact that he owes this much money, the fact that we don't even know who he owes the money to. And the fact that he apparently, according to his taxes, has no legitimate way of paying the money um, all makes him a compromised person. And for, how, for a compromised person to be running the American government is a kind of textbook bad thing that, that, that 
counterterrorism experts and 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 the like have warned us about from the beginning with this man. So from a from a governmental kind of kind of integrity of government perspective, the outstanding loan money is actually the biggest story um, for people to focus on. And the New York Times is promising to publish more stories in the first debate between him and Joe Biden is Tuesday night.